everyone. Today, I want to talk to you about biological prime time. It's a, uh, a beautiful Saturday morning. I've had some shocking weather over the past week or so, so it's nice to actually get out and invest again. Not that I've got the guns to, to justify it, but <laughs> the amount I'm running now should be, should be losing muscle mass rather than gaining it. So I expect to see a, a more whistle down version of me over the coming weeks and months. Um, so today I'll talk about um, on Saturdays is productivity hacks and mindset. I'll start with the big chunky stuff and then go deeper on, on stuff as we get more into these episodes. But um, biological prime time is a big one. And uh, a lot of you are probably thinking it's some vitamin supplement or something <laughs> to, to enhance your productivity levels or something. Well, it's absolutely nothing like that. Um, although there are a lot of people that swear by supplements and stuff. Uh, I'm not an expert in that, and I'm a bit old school in that regard. I'd rather put as little stuff into my body as possible, let my body do its thing, and just tailor my lifestyle around how I am to try and get optimised in terms of my output. So, in a nutshell, biological prime time is your energy levels. And this links with <coughs> with books like Eat That Frog. If you've read it, it's about tackling your biggest, most important, ugliest task first, similar to kind of the one thing as well, which is a, a similar kind of philosophy in a, in a different format. But um, ultimately, you do, you know, you've got, to, you've got to get those big, important tasks done. However, the issue is, is we all each operate independently and very differently to one another. And what I mean by that is that we all have our own biological energy clock. And uh, everybody's different. Some people like getting up at crazy o'clock in the morning because that's when they're super energized, get loads of work done. Some people stay up super late and a night owl because they need less sleep and they can get more done. But you need to understand what your biological energy clock is. You need to understand how it operates for you. And you also need to understand where the sweet spots are. Now, I've done this, I've tested it multiple times, and I know mine down to pretty much down to a T. And the only way you can measure it is by tracking it. You need to do this for an absolute minimum two weeks. A month would be more ideal. Simple time tracker. You know, use a time tracking piece of software. There's loads of free ones out there. Something like Toggle, something like that would be, uh, would be perfect. There's loads of other ones out there. I'll have to try and dig out a few that I've been through in the past. But, or you can just do a simple pen and paper, but it's easier using an app because I'm assuming that you're carrying some form of smart device around with you all the time. So rather than a notebook and a pen, if you carry a notebook and a pen, that's fine. But what you want to do is uh, every hour, set an alarm on your clock or your watch and you just note how you're feeling. So are you feeling high, high energy, low energy, so a bit lethargic and maybe sleepy? Or are you just, just not sure, kind of somewhere in the middle? The other three things, try and keep them to high and low if possible, because um, you know that's more useful than, I don't know, somewhere in the middle. So, uh, so try and try and stick to that. Bear with me a second, I've got so much in my toe. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, um, yeah, try and keep it to high and low. If you're not sure, just put you're not sure, it's fine. Over the course of the weeks and uh, a month that you get the data, you understand and what you'll, what you'll know is how your your flow is okay so mine for example i don't like getting up early i'm terrible at getting up early i've tried it i've tried getting up at four o'clock i've tried getting up at five o'clock six o'clock i've also measured how much sleep i need as well because this is an important one with your biological prime prime time clock is understanding how much sleep you need i know my optimum level of sleep is six and a half hours if i get over seven and a half I get tired. If I get under five and a half, I get tired. If I'm somewhere between, you know, six and seven hours, that's perfect for me. Okay, so I've worked that out and I've measured it and I've tried. I use a Fitbit, um, Inspire HR. I have an Apple Watch uh, 4 as well. So if all my tech kind of runs through my Apple Watch, my Fitbit just stays on me predominantly to track steps and basic lifestyle stuff. But I'll talk about this in another another episode, um, why I wear my tech and why, what I do it for. But um, track your sleep, because obviously if you get 
you get a couple of hours sleep, it doesn't matter how your energy, your uh, biological prime time or energy levels are working, it's going to be, the results are going to be skewed by the lack of sleep. So you need to kind of do this simultaneously. And what you'll hopefully under, understand by the end of this process is, um, if you haven't got a, a sleep tracker, by the way, there's loads of apps on your phone that use the microphone. Uh, they're not as accurate as anything that's wearable. That's why I bought the, uh, the Fitbit. But um, it will give you enough for this purpose. So you're tracking how long you sleep for. You just put your phone by the side of your bed, put the sleep app on. It doesn't make any noise or anything, but it's just, it's just listening to your breathing. So I'll explain how it does it. So, so that's a little hack for you. Now. I think it's um, sleep cycles, the, the kind of popular one. Completely free. So I'm um, sure you recommend you use that um, to do so. But then, you know, I know from my biological time time is that I get up normally around half past eight, it's kind of in the morning. And, you know, I sit up, I do, I know I'm, I'm a bit low for the first hour. Energy levels are low, but I'm trying to, you know, acclimatise to waking up. So I sit there and I'll do low level work. I just check my phone for what's come in overnight because I've got a team of virtual assistants in, in the Philippines. So they've normally had quite a productive evening at night while I'm sleeping. Another productivity hack I'll talk to you about on another episode. Um, so I just clear up a few admin, a few messages and that side of things for the first hour, brush my teeth, get ready. And then straight away, I'm into my running gear because I know that running and my vlog are super high level tasks for me. And the longer I leave it throughout the day, the more tired I'm going to get, the less likely I'm be doing it. So I'm always out by half nine, no later than 10, for the next hour to do my run and vlog. So, uh, and my energy levels are high at that point, which is why I do it. I then maintain high level of energy right the way through till about two o'clock. And the reason for that is I'm, I'm, I'm on form, so I pick off my highest level tasks during that time. Most important, because my mental aptitude is at an optimum peak. But as soon as I had lunch, my, my energy and my focus is, is on digesting my lunch. So I lose the energy and I have a lull in the afternoon. So when I have a lull, that's when uh, I switch to kind of low important tasks and the finish this stuff again. And again, I'm, I'm lulled for most of the afternoon. I have it, I have um, dinner then with the kids and everything, the family, at half five, six. And I've stopped by dinner. So I do, I do low level stuff in the afternoons. And then uh, I then peak again. I get an energy spike from, uh, from my, uh, my dinner. Normally at about kind of nine, 10 o'clock. But if I'm, I'm spending time with the wife. She might go to bed at like 11. And I'll work from 11 till half one, two, quite often most nights because I'm absolutely in the zone again there, and I do high-level work then. And uh, I know that, it's exactly how it works. I know I've got to get between six and seven hours sleep, and I know those, those hours, because it's, it's proven, I've tested it, I know exactly how it feels. So um, that's how I've calculated mine. So I hope this is useful, and, but it's a super productivity hack. And what I mean by that is, you get this right, I kid you not, you can possibly double your levels of productivity because you're hitting the most important stuff when you're feeling really high and you're dealing with all the rest of the chatter and buffer and administrative stuff that you can outsource. I'll talk to you about that on another day. But the lower level work on your plate, you're dealing when your energy's low, the less important work. So the compounding effect of applying your, your time in that way is, is, is you get far more than a double your return in terms of productivity. So do it, so to summarize, track your sleep, uh, you can do it with a free app, a sleep cycle, available on Android and iOS, if you don't want to buy a wearable. Wearables are better if you want to do this more um, accurately, but honestly, a uh, free app is it's fine for now. And use a free time tracker, something like Toggle, or there's loads of others. It's the one I can think of at the top of my head. It's free, easy to use, works on all your devices. And, uh, and just don't record your tasks at this stage. We'll talk about time tracking and why you do it another episode but just record high or low energy levels if you're not sure put somewhere in between but try and be at one end of the spectrum or the other for two to two, two weeks to a month and then analyze the data and then plug in your calendar the hours that you're high the hours that you're low and the amount of sleep you need and then adjust your task management around your biological prime time and you'll get so much more done often in less time and make a massive difference to your business so I hope that's useful, and uh, I'll talk more about productivity acts 
next uh, next Saturday. And uh, again, please like, engage, comment, share. Any questions you've got for me, put it here. Any topics you want me to include in future episodes, please uh, please put in the comments, and I'll certainly add them to the content plan. So stay safe, stay positive, and I'll speak to you very soon.